All right, welcome back. Let's move along now into chapter eight where we're going to discuss monopolies. Monopoly, not the board game monopoly, but the monopoly where it's a market situation where you have these three characteristics. The first of which you probably know is that there must be just one firm who is in the market, right? One firm controls the entire market. Remember in a perfect competition, there were lots and lots and lots of sellers, right? In a monopoly, it's almost the exact opposite, right? We're looking at the two polar extremes here. One, there's tons. One, there's just one. The other thing about the product that it's selling is that it's a unique product. It, the key to it that there is that there are really no substitutes for it, right? This way you have true control over the market as well when you're inside of these monopolies. And then the last thing that has to happen for you to be in what's considered a monopoly economically is that it has to be almost impossible to get in and out of the market. All right, so these are the three characteristics, right? Sort of the antithesis of the, of the perfect competitions, right? Perfect competitions where there were lots and lots of firms that, the, that the, the products were almost identical or practically not discernible, right? There was no difference between them. And its characteristics in a perfect competition were that it was real easy to get in out. Monopolies, the opposite almost every side of the coin. All right, now, you may ask yourself, why do monopolies exist? Well, there's three types of monopolies that exist out there. The first one is natural monopoly. A natural monopoly just basically means that for natural reasons, you're the only one who can be the person who runs this particular business. Um, actually, Alcoa, who is one of the people who owned a, the only bauxite mines in the U.S. back in the, you know, when it was first discovered that that was the key ingredient for making aluminum. So Alcoa actually had a natural monopoly on, in, on aluminum, if I can say that word, because they were naturally the only ones who were actually mining bauxite ore. The other types of monopolies that we're more commonly understanding about is government-run or government-dictated monopolies. So things like the power companies, the water companies, all of these sorts of things have a natural or have a government-driven monopoly. The government basically said, hey, you guys you're going to be the company that runs the water department, and you are, because it would be too difficult to have multiple companies running water and having multiple pipes underneath the ground owned by different companies. Just not reasonable to have that. So the government dictates that this will be the company that runs the electricity, the water, the sewer, all of those types of things. And then the last type of monopoly out there is the, is the one where economies of scale or long-run cost analysis drives the market to being just run by one firm or one company. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically what that means is that you have to look at the long-run average cost curve. Right? So think back to chapter 6. All right, here's our long-run average cost curve. Long-run average total cost curve. So here is cost and here is production. And the idea is that when you first get into a market, usually you start with a small firm, with a small company. So your short run average cost curve is something that looks like this, right? Here's your, your, your average total cost curve in the short run when you build a really small factory, right? And notice where your average costs are. They're way up here. If you get a company that can get really big, and get its average costs way down along this long run average cost curve and they get to set the price, guess what they do? They price out all of these small firms that are trying to be in the market because their average cost is going to be somewhere up here, your average cost is going to be down here. Here's the difference between the prices. If you need to make a profit, you can set the P, the price, right here or somewhere like right here, and these guys are going to be losing money. What are they going to do? Get out of the business, right? That's what long-run analysis means, the economies of scale, where the average cost of producing whatever it is that you're producing keeps going down more and more. That's exactly why you have monopolies in a lot of industries, because one firm has taken over the, the industry and gotten as far down the long-run average cost curve that they can get, right? Think about it in terms of like... Um, really expensive companies like the National Basketball Association or Major League Baseball. These types of industries, there's only one of them, right? There's no two NBAs out there. Why? Because it costs a great deal of money to get into the business. 
And if you try and start up a new basketball company or a new basketball firm and say you only want to have, say, five or ten teams, your average cost curve is going to be up here. You're not going to be able to experience the economies of scale of getting 20 to 30 cities who are all giving you a little bit of a revenue bonus so that you build your, your stadiums there so that their people get work, right? You're not going to see those as much of those because you're only going to be in, say, five or ten different cities. And you'll never be able to break into the market. Right? If you, so for those of you who are a little bit older, like me, you might remember the USFL, right? the United States Football League, where it tried to compete against the National Football League. Did it work? Nope. They couldn't get far enough down on the on the long run total the, you know, the long run average total cost curve to actually make money on it, right? There's, there was just no way to do it. And what the NFL started doing was that normally their profit margin, you know, if you think about football as a product, right? The price, the the, the price, the cost for them to actually to run a football league was something like this, and they were probably charging somewhere up around here. Well, when the USFL came in, what the actual NFL did was that it lowered its price. All of the revenue sharing that it was doing during the USFL's existence, it was cutting its share of, of the profit that it was earning and giving it out to its other competitors saying, as long as you don't go and work with the USFL, we'll you know, cut you a deal when it comes to advertising in the NFL. Right? So the three reasons. This one is the one where we're dealing with it most. These guys, these guys are pretty much mandated or you got lucky. You're the only one who found where the bauxite wars are. So that's what gets us into a monopoly. We'll come back here in a little bit and we'll start talking about profit in a monopoly because there is profit.